Hey there everyone, this is Samuel Johnson and welcome back to the Spider-Verse Retrospectives. And today, we're going to be concluding our discussion on the automatic storyline as well as wrapping up the Spider-Geddon era as we take a look at the, at the Superior Spider-Man, Volume 2, Number 12. So, <clears throat> last time on the Superior Spider-Man... So, things were kind of going to hell for Otto Octavius. Thanks to the efforts of Spider's Man and Spider Norman, his identity at, basically the superior Spider-Man's identity as Otto Octavius was outed to the public, as well as, as, well as his, well, private identity as Elliot Tulliver being, rele being released as Otto Octavius to his boss, who, which, it ultimately didn't do Jack because his boss already knew, but basically, Norman was, uh, basically, the, the twisted pair of Spideys was doing everything in their power to destroy, to destroy Norman and everything he cared about, even to the point where they wound up attacking a boy named James, who Otto had grown close to after he saved him, and unfortunately, their efforts kind of succeeded, as Spider Norman was able to kidnap James from his aunt and uncle, and was planning to kill them. In an effort to save his life, Otto wanted making a deal with Norman, and Norman pretty much told him, fine, if I'll let the kid go if you kill three innocent people in public view, so that your name is now forever tarnished. As such, Otto says that he agrees to the terms, but he has no intention of following through with it, as even if he did decide to listen to Norman, he's pretty sure Norman would still kill the kid anyway. As such, kind of pushed to his wit's end as everything is now t as everything is taken from him and everything is tainted and he has no idea what to do, he deci Otto decides that he needs to make the ultimate sacrifice. As, util as utilizing his technology, he's able to send out a signal to hell, in which which in turn summons Mephisto right to him. Why? Well, he wants to make a deal with him. In this case, Otto, wants to, well, Otto wanted to make a deal wherein he would get back his original body for one day, and in that day he would use his, he would use his status as Doc, he would use his malicious nature as Doc Ock to just take Spider-Norman down. And, however, while Mephisto initially didn't, decides to just kind of push that deal aside, he does give an alternate deal. Specifically, he will give Otto his body back, but not for one day. It'll be for keeps. And on top of that, he'll bring Otto back at the peak of his physical health. So he'll be completely healthy. Any d any physical or mental diseases he had would be gone. And, well, he's also going to get rid of every single trace of Peter Parker that's in Otto's mind. Something that when Otto's loved ones, specifically Anna Maria, hears, they try and talk Otto out of, saying that that's not a good idea, as it might undo everything that Otto has become, everything he's worked towards to become a hero. But Otto, essentially pushed to his pushed to his limit, accepts the deal, reverting back into Doctor Octopus, and now and now getting ready to go on a roaring rampage of revenge against Spider Norman, with his first targets being the Brothers Grimm from Night Shift, who betrayed Otto, and who now Otto and who Otto is now pretty much just beating and just now brutalizing in order to learn Spider Norman's location, which is where this issue begins. As it turns out, Spider Norman is living in a penthouse in San Francisco, specifically one of Norman's penthouses. At least I assume it is. He doesn't actually say it's Norman's, but he did say he got it from Norman's money. So, you know, whatever. Point is, point is, Norman is keeping James up there and is using whatever credit that, this, that the main universe Norman Osborn still has to pretty much just live the high life so that everyone's properly taken care of. It's a... Uh, I find that slightly amusing, but whatever. Norman Osborn is still Norman Osborn, even if he's just... even if he's a Spider-Man. But either way, James is being... But either way, James is being defiant, wanting to be let go, and Norman says that he w that he will let him go as long as Otto keeps his deal and kills three in three innocent people, which ultimate which seems to get which uh, which seems to go, which does seem to spark something as just as Norman finishes that sentence, someone manages to enter the penthouse. Specifically, Otto arrives as Elliot Tulliver. Which is strange, and he says he's come to kill the very first person, as he's got some guy in a big overgrown trench coat and hat, and says that he and says that he'd rather that he thought, he'd think that Norman would want to see this particular one be killed. At first, Norman's wondering how the hell he got in here, which Otto just says, "Oh, I'm a ge I'm a genius. I find ways," and basically. I find ways, or more specifically, he says that Spider's man, who was supposed to be guarding the entrance, was stupid, so whatever. But ultimately, Norman decides to uh, accept the terms, though he does tell Otto that he needs to suit up when he kills the guy, and that for the next two people, he's got to do better than just the regular old derelict. Although, before, although as he as Norman gets the cameras ready to record everything, he does decide that he wants to check who this derelict is, because after all, he has to be sure he's an innocent person. Can't have it. Can't have Otto killing this some random person with a criminal record. At which point the person in the hood suddenly says, why Norman? 
before a metal tentacle ju just flies out of, of his jacket, grabs Otto's neck and snaps it. At which point, the at which point the man in the suit, the man in the trench coat, just rips it to shreds, and we see that that is actually Otto Octavius, and the and the Otto that walked him in. It was just a spare Elliot Tulliver clone body. And the whole reason that it was talking was because Otto had set up a neural link with it with a small Octobot, and he was controlling it. As such, Spider-Norman is immediately freaking out, and he, and he tries calling Spider-Man for backup, but it turns out that Spider-Man is a little occupied. As down the lower floor, as we see every single... We see Spider-Man duking it out with, a, with hordes of Spider and Octobots. It's uh, kind of awesome. As such, Spider Norman is quickly real. As if Spider Norman decides to go for every supervillain's route and try and use the hostage as collateral, as he breaks open a window and holds James out of it. His intent is that he believes that Otto will, well, <clears throat> that Otto, despite being back in his old body, still holds on to the heroics that he that he that he held so dear as the superior Spider Man. Plus, he's grown close to James, so hey, he's gonna feel something if James is put in mortal danger. But no, Otto pretty much just gives Norman the equivalent of, go ahead, drop him. I don't give a shit about that little brat. At which point, Norman says, well, I think you do. And I think you're finally, and I think you're only going to realize it too late. At which point, he just drops James right out the window. And Otto just smiles. Something that actually scare, that something that actually shocks Norman. At which point, he orders the cameras be turned on, and he quickly realizes he's cut. Quickly realizes that shit, this isn't working. I need to just fight this guy. As such, spy, as such, we get a battle between Doc Ock and an alternate universe Spider-Man. It, which is yeah, this is awesome as it sounds. Yes, this yes, this other Spider-Man, maybe an old, maybe a Norman Osborn, but. Still Spider-Man. I can't deny it. it's still kind of cool. So yeah, this is so yeah. The two of them duke it out, and of course Norman is still acting all superior as he thinks that he can still outclass no outclass Otto. He thinks he's smarter than him, better than him, and on top of that, he's got his extra spider powers, and he's got extra and plus he thinks he's got more arms than him. So he thinks that he can easily kick Otto's ass. Well, it turns out the extra arms argument immediately goes out the window as as suddenly more more. More 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 tent more of Otto's tentacles begin bursting into the room. It turns out that Otto has actually linked his mind up with some of his old harnesses, and all of them are bursting back into this apartment. And what I and what it's another thing, as they all start swarming over Norman, we see we do see one crawling back into the window that Norman broke and dropped James out of, and we see James inside it. Yeah, we learn later in the comic that no, that Otto knew that Norman was going to drop James out James out of that particular window, so he set up one of the harnesses there to catch the kid. So again, smart thinking. But either way, yeah, Norman tries fending off the arms as much as possible, but they all just start overwhelming him one by one until he can barely even move as they've got him all wrapped up. At which point he's just confused how Otto is able to do this because he shouldn't have the mental fortitude to control all these tentacles. But Otto just tells him. I have a superior mind to you. You have no idea what I'm capable of. At which point, with Norman now completely trapped, now completely trapped by all of the tentacles, Otto begins breaking every single bone in his body, which Otto admits he's doing methodically and surgically, but the pain is still very much real as Norman's as Norman's body is crushed little by little until he just keeps screaming out until and with him just screaming out in pain the whole time until eventually, yeah, he's in, yeah he's in so much pain that he just sent, that he just goes silent. He's not dead, but he actually wishes he would be. Otto begins to exposit that the way he broke his bones, he thinks the recovery process is not going to be pretty, and that if he does recover, his body is not going to be exactly the way it was before. So essentially, Norman is now going to be living with a handicap for the rest of his life. So, uh, yeah, sucks to him. sucks for him. As such, as such, Otto decides that it's time to send Norman on his way, as he manages to reach into his suit, and he pulls out the strand of the web of life and destiny that he used to, tra to, go to travel there. And with, uh, at which point Otto uses the strand of the web to open up a gateway and then just chuck Norman in with the intent, with his intent being that he knows that in Norman's broken, that Norman now being sent there back with his broken body, he's now going to be a bit, he's not going to be completely helpless. And odds are he's made quite a few enemies on his world. So, uh, yeah, he's right fucked in that regard. But then there's finally the matter of clearing up any potential threats to Otto. So, well, with the camera still rolling... Otto makes a declaration to anyone. He pretty much just tells everyone that his time as the superior Spider-Man was a mistake, that he basically that he had a sickness in him that he's now free of, but he does make one thing clear. If 
anyone tries going after anybody that he cared about as the superior Spider-Man, then he will do unto them far worse than what he did to Norman. And, uh, yeah. It's, uh, pretty threatening. It's very threatening. At which point, the comic then cuts ahead to later as we cut, as we cut to the, ho as we cut to the hospital, as we see Emma managing to wake up from her, from her coma as she's talking with, with Aunt, with Anna Maria. Basically, after the broadcast, Otto wound up smashing the cameras, and then progress has now pretty much gone viral all around the world. Which, which, which Anna, be, which, with Anna telling Emma everything about the broadcast, but also advising her to probably not watch it, as it's hard. As well, it's Otto, it's Otto Octavius reverting back into Doc Ock, so uh, not exactly a fun sight. And even when, and Emma's even having trouble comprehending it because. He put so much effort into trying to change and do better. So why the so why the hell would he do all of that? Which Anna Maria states that he's probably not the same man that they knew, and, he, and she wonders that if he even remembers any of that time. At which point they get an answer to that question as the, as someone enters their room. Otto, once again wearing a trench coat, as a. Uh, as such, Anna Marie is immediately on the defense as she tries as she tries putting herself between Otto and Emma, but Otto does but Otto does kind of go on to exposit what the, what's how his mind is now working now. Put simply, Mephisto did make good on what he said. He has stripped Otto of literally every facet of his mind that had anything to do with Peter Parker, which also means that he doesn't remember a lot of what happened during the first time he was the Superior Spider-Man, as well. It was during that time that he was inhabiting Peter's body, and since every and since part of what part of everything that has to do with Peter Parker also includes details about his personal life, that means he has no memory of being Peter at all, which also sadly means his memories of Anna Maria are a little dim. So, however, he does remember his time as Elliot Tulliver more clearly, as that had less to do with who Spider-Man was, and as such, he does remember Emma. As such, <clears throat> Emma tries doing some. As such, Emma tries to reconnect with Otto, as she does. As she does, still care about him and does want to try and get through to the goodness in him. But Otto just keeps brushing her off. Just to, and not. He doesn't even use her real name. He just calls her Miss whatever her last name was. Like he just like he's clearly just trying to keep this as distant as possible. And likewise, he's and likewise he's just trying to be very sterile and cold. And in his own words, he's just trying to essentially essentially just try and wrap up loose threads, so to speak. However, Anna Maria thinks this is a load of crap. For starters, while Otto does claim that Emma that claim that Emma felt that Emma fell in love with the young handsome Elliot Tulliver, and while Emma tries saying, "I know you probably don't think I'm beautiful like this," Anna Ma Anna Maria says, "No, Otto's different. It's the other guy that goes with the supermodels and black cats." Basically. Anna Maria start. Anna Maria just kind of starts calling Otto out on his shit, especially since she reminds him about about how how he wronged her when he was the first Superior Spider-Man, which he tries to apologize for, but she cuts him off. And at which point she starts kind of going on. She starts getting on Otto's case because, well, she doesn't think that all of his goodness just magically went away with him going back to being Doc Ock, because after all, going back to when to when Otto fought off fought against Norman. He still saved James. And while Otto does try and defend himself in that regard, no. no. Anna Maria keeps throwing it back in his face. Like he like he had the extra harness on standby to save his life. And on top of that, it turns out off camera, he, actually, he had the harness to bring James back home safe and sound. And it turns out, Otto actually went, a little, went the extra mile for James. As it turns out, after he got his old body back, Otto set up a trust fund for James. Which means that James will probably have a will live very comfortably for the rest of his life. So clearly, there is still a lot, there is still quite a bit of good in Otto, and so Anna Maria kind of and Anna Maria and Anna Maria is clearly able to put the two and two together and connect all the dots. So she clearly just wants to ask Otto what he's doing here, really. And again, he tries to say he's just here to close up, trying to close. He's just trying to close the door on everything, but no. Basically, it turn basically Anna Maria is able to figure out that he's here to say goodbye, and potentially, he don't, he wants he wants Emma and Emma Anna to essentially talk him out of doing this because that, to, or talk him out of leaving. Because here's the thing, 
I, when the instant auto showed up, he tried to str- he tried to hold up the same strong demeanor that he had as the original doc as as he did when he was just when he was just Doctor Octopus. He's keeping his distance emotionally, and he even tr- and even when he mentioned talking about how he knows nothing about spot about Pe- about who Spider Man really is anymore, he does also go on to claim that the next time he encounters Spider Man, it will be him humbling him as it should be with Doctor Octopus versus Spider Man. So it's clear. So but at the same how. However, Anna Maria. However, basically, Anna Maria and Emma are just trying to get through to Otto. Tell him that they know that the, he cares about them, whether he wants to admit it or not. That they do want to be. That they want to be there for him. That they that they still love him. They still care about him. And that people that there are still people in, out there who want to help him. Max Modell would gladly help them. Emma wants to still be with him, even if he's not Elliot Tolliver anymore. Anna Maria wants to help keep bringing out the good in him. They just they want. Want him to stay they keep be- they keep begging him they keep saying that they'll be there for him that they love him and care about him and you can see it's starting to have an effect on Otto but well uh well there were mostly right they were right well more specifically they were right about Otto coming here to say goodbye and while Otto and unfortunately the part unfo- unfortunately for them though Otto is not intending to stay. And the more they keep trying to push Otto to stay and to be a part of this, the angrier he gets. To the point where he just goes into a full temper tan. To the point where he just starts raging right there in the hospital room. Now, I mean like full supervillain rage. His tentacles come out, he yells, he yells at them and calls them imbeciles to stay the hell away from him. That he will have nothing to do with him. And they actually, and Emma and Anna Marie actually genuinely get scared as they back away from him at this. And finally he just tells them that they, that they could... And t- he just tells the two of them to stay away from him. That they want, that they shall have nothing to do with his life. As he immediately rips the door off of the hospital room and start and just starts and starts clamoring out with his tentacles and saying that if they should ever see each other again, it will not be good for any involved. And with that, and when he says that last line, you see Otto's face. And here's the thing: he had his back turned to them when he stormed out. Oh, of course he did because he was storming out. But. You can see that doing all this, yelling at them, telling them to stay the hell away, it's hurting. It's hurting so much. And as you see Otto's face, you can see him just fighting to hold back tears. You can tell he wanted to stay, that he genuinely would have loved nothing more than to be back in the to be back with Emma and we can continue his life. But he's Dr. Octopus. What life is there for them with him? As such, the comic cuts ahead to one week later, and we see a funeral, specifically for Elliot Tulliver. As well, they still got guys. Guys, uh, well, here's the thing: the clone body that Otto killed was still was still a very convincing match for the body that Otto inhabited before becoming who he was before becoming Doc Ock again. So unfortunate. So as mostly as res- out of respect for who Otto was, there. Essentially, Max Modell and everybody else associated with the Superior Spider-Man are, well, doing a proper burial and they're saying their goodbyes. And, yeah, you can tell it's kind of painting them a little to say the things they are. Like, Max Modell gives a eulogy about how how the, he feels it's sad that Elliot Tulliver lost his life in a power struggle between Doc Ock and Spider-Norman. How they lost someone truly dear to them. And then when Emma talks comes up, she talks about how Elliot Tulliver was a good man who touched so many more lives, whether he meant to or not. Who he tried, who tried every day to be better than who he was, to be something good, to be something strong. And now he's gone. But now, but they will always remember. But ultimately, she will always remember all the good times they had, even if they were brief. And in time, and in time, and, get, and, and given enough time, eventually the pot, eventually one day, there you'll look back. They'll look back on those memories and all smile. One day. And as Emma gives this eulogy, at the edge of the cemetery where the funeral is being held, we can see Otto watching on, stern and silent. And with him, and with him is Digger of Night Shift, who is to, who is pretty much just acting there as his kind of a, his sort of attendant. As this, at which point, this is just here to wrap everything up. Digger asks Otto if he has any intention of visiting James, but Otto says that it wouldn't be a good idea, as such a meeting would probably be confusing to say the least 
but at the very least, but all, but on top of that, Otto still has further business to wrap up as he gives as he gives as he gives Digger a bag of essentially what's meant to be Night Shift's pension. Though he does warn Digger that if any member of Night Shift tries paying for the Brothers Grimm's hospital bills, he will kill them. So there you go. At which point Digger asks Otto if that's it then. Are they back to being the bad guys? Which even Digger's like, it was kind of nice helping people, and don't you miss, and don't you miss your time as the superior Spider-Man? But Otto just says he doesn't like thinking about it. At which point you can see him stuffing something into a nearby garbage can, and he says that the die. And he tells him, and he, essentially the comic ends with Otto talking about that there is a reason why he uses the phrase, the die is cast, and because well, when a die is cast. It cannot be undone. And as Otto says this, he walks away, and we see what it is he's stuffed into the garbage. And the last panel of the last issue of the second run of the Superior Spider-Man is, is an homage to Spider-Man No More, as we see the Superior Spider-Man suit sticking out of the garbage with Otto walking away, his back turned to the life he once had. So, yeah. That was the final issue of the Superior Spider-Man, or at the very least the second run. And uh, my thoughts on the issue, as well as the story itself. The issue was action-packed, had some really good character moments, and was filled with tragedy. But it also pisses me off. And it pisses me off because I love it so much. Also because of what it represents, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Basically, if I have to give my thoughts on this storyline, it's this. This finale was way better than it had any right to be. I already talked about last when I talked about the last issue. That I know the major reason why I know the reason why they reverted Otto back into being Doctor Octopus. Why they had to put him back in the Doc Ock body? Because again, status quo is god in comics, and you need to have a you need to keep a consistent status quo in order to keep drawing in new readers or make them consistent with what they see on the big screen. Because they need to make sure that everything looks familiar enough so that people can still want to keep reading this, keep reading this shit. And it pissed me off that they were going to be doing this with Otto because, again, why I loved the Superior Spider-Man was because I loved the character journey. Seeing a man that was a former supervillain trying his damnedest to become a good person. But I knew, I knew beyond a shadow of doubt that if they turned the Superior Spider-Man back into Dr. Octopus, then that would be it. They would have hit the reset button on him. The status quo would have been restored. Doc Ock would be back. And odds are the next time we saw him, he would not be acting as a hero. But. It's how they did it. That got my, that, that drew me in. As I mentioned when I talked about the last issue. This decision was not made lightly in universe. Otto Octavius did not just throw everything that he had built away because, well, I think being Doc Ock is better. I want to be a supervillain. He didn't fail at being a hero. He gave everything up because he was too good at it. Here's the thing. While I have not read every single issue in this run, I read enough to at least see what Otto had built as the superior Spider-Man. And what he had built was something good, was something grand. And it showed a man who, while not perfect, was struggling every day to be better than who he was. And in some cases, he was succeeding. Every, like, he was working freely with other heroes, accepting their input and working alongside them to the best of his abilities. He listened to their advice. In his civilian life, he was making connections and opening up to people. He grew close to a new woman, to, the new, to a new woman, Emma, and they wound up forming a new relationship. He was happily enjoying his job at Horizon University to the point where he and his boss, Max, Max Modell, actually had a good relationship. Even to the point where when Max already... And when Max learned 
that Elliot Tulliver was both Doc Ock and the Superior Spider-Man, he pretty much decided to give him the benefit of the doubt and wanted to see if he was do and wanted to see if he was up to anything. And when he learned no, he wasn't up to anything. He's genuinely trying to put his best foot forward here. Max trusted him, and he helped him when his secret got outed because he knew someone is trying to tear down everything you built here, and I want to help you. And I want to help you take them down because he genuinely trusted this man. And you see that throughout the comics. You see Otto desperately trying to live the best version of his life and to actually do good not just spot actually do good with the name spider-man not just because oh not just because oh well he needs to look good to get garner a positive reputation but because he genuinely wanted to do good he did he wanted to make sure that people were safe following the events of war of the realms he was racked with guilt over all the lives in the country that he couldn't save or or who or 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 who or who he could he could have done or he could or he could have put or could he could have done more to save like this is a man who who as we've established tried to nuke half the world who stole spider-man's body because he was because his old one was dying who has done so many horrendous acts as dr octopus who is now trying to do the right thing, actually live a better life, to live by the mantra that with great power there must also come great responsibility and not tarnish it. He's doing everything he can to try and keep it all together. And yet he was failing. And I don't mean that in the sense that he was, that he was failing at being a good person. No, I mean, he was physically failing. He encountered a foe who had who had outthought who had outthunk him, who outmaneuvered him, who knew exactly what weak points to hit to hurt Otto, who did everything in his power to make Otto suffer, and despite Otto's best efforts, he couldn't beat him. He couldn't take him down. At least not as the superior Spider-Man. And as a result, Otto may allowed himself to, allowed himself to be steeped in the muck once again because he knew if I stay how I am right now, if I stay Elliot Tulliver, if I stay the superior Spider-Man, then I cannot save the people I care about. I cannot be, I can't, I'll just be stuck here standing by while this madman with Osborne's face destroys everything I love, every one I love. And so to save the people that he put, and so to save those he cared about, he pushed them away. He allowed himself to become a monster again. Allowed himself, allowed the evil to be let back in. Allowed the darkness to take hold of him once more just because he knew he could use that darkness to save the people he genuinely cared about. And he did. He saved James. He stopped Spider-Norman. And he made it clear that if anyone messes with those people again, if anyone tries to mess with them again, he will end them. No ifs, ands, or buts. He will not back down. He will not surrender. They will face the full wrath of Dr. Octopus. And it works. Because what because not because from a purely super from the superhero side of things, the battle between Doc Ock and Spider Norman is genuinely good. After all, like I said, it is essentially a battle between Doctor Octopus and Spider Man, even if the Spider Man we're facing is from a parallel universe and is psychotic. But it is still a cool battle, to say the least. Especially, especially since it is kind of cathartic to see Norman just shocked at seeing Otto going back to using supervillain tactics. Because Otto, because Norman well, he pretty much banked on Otto being a good guy to make his whole revenge plan work. And so to see, and so to see, and so for Norman to hold this, hold J, hold James out of a window, expecting Otto to feel something, only to be shocked when he drops him, and Otto and Otto is just smiling sinisterly. 
Like that, I love that. I love that. Like, I love that because he's at a loss. And of course, what makes it what makes it and it makes it even better too is that Otto planned that. That was all for show. After all, like I said, he expected Norman to drop James out the window, so he had a, a pair of arms out there ready to catch the kid when worse came to worse. So he was perfectly ready to say. So he he just wanted to see Norman get sh get be shocked because here's the thing: Norman didn't see James come back in. He when James was brought back in the room Norman had his back to him so Norman was just thrown for a loop so through the whole battle he's like oh shit I'm fucked aren't I so and I love that it's awesome seeing Otto actually essentially essentially just to say the gloves are off now I'm gonna get I'm ending this fucker and just going all in brutalizing him bringing in as many of his tentacles and harnesses as he can to just start wailing on Norman and to finally just break him both physically both Physically and mentally, the, that it's that in that not in that regard, that's cathartic. That is gen, that was actually really nice. So I ca so I dig that because after all, even monsters when when a good man goes to war. But in the character side of things, what makes this what makes this turn work is the fact that <sighs> Otto has to say goodbye. Because ultimately, just regardless of whatever character development Otto has undergone and how much of it has stuck, Otto is still Dr. Octopus. He is a wanted man and a monster. He knows that people will be hunting him, that people already fear him. And so while he knows that there are people who genuinely still love and care about him and want him to come back, he knows that he can't be with them because if they're associated with him, they'll still be put in danger. Though they, they, even if Otto decide, like whether Otto decho decided to continue going back, want, if Otto decided to go back to being a bad guy or actually continue trying to stay on the up and up and do the right thing, they these people would be constantly put in danger because, like Norman, there would be criminals who think that if these people are that if Otto Octavius cares about these people, then they are viable targets. And Otto does not want them to be targets. It's why he pushes Anna Maria and Emma away when he goes to see them at the hospital. Because he because he can't let them be close to them. Because they'll be at risk if they do. But what makes it work, in my opinion, but what makes it work and hurt so much is that Anna Maria and Emma want to still be a part of his life. They want to be there for Otto. They want to help him. They want to show him that even if Peter, the Peter Parker influence is gone, that there's still a good man in there. Because he did good when he came back to being Otto. He saved James. He got him home safe and sound. He set up a trust fund for the kid just so that he could have a well life. Just so that he could have a good life. Otto Octavius did clearly care about him. He wants this kid to be happy. So clearly there was still something about being the superior your Spider-Man that's stuck with Otto. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Otto, and, and, and it doesn't matter because Otto can't be with them. And he wants to be with them. He wants to be with these people just as badly as they want him to stay. But he has to push them away. And when he put and when he does push them away, when he screams and yells and destroys things and tells them they have no part in his life, they need to stay the hell away, and they're cowering in the corner. You can see how much it hurts Otto to do that. As he as he storms out of the room, destroying everything in his path, he's doing you can they just you just see his face very briefly, and he's holding back tears. You can tell that doing that hurt. You can tell that having to push away the people he loved is, is stinging like you would not believe. But it had to be done even if nobody wanted it to happen. And the fact, and ultimately that's what makes the ending just that tragic. That Otto gave everything up. Every good thing he built up. His life. His reputation. His reputation. His 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 the people he the people he cared about. All his friends. All are gone. He has lost it all, and it was by his own hand that he lost it. But he'd rather be. But he'd rather be alone and sad, than see than be alone. He'd then ha then have all of them, and have them suffer. I like that's what makes this better. 
he like in the end of the original superior spider-man Otto willingly sacrificed everything he built just to ensure that it would live it may not have him in the picture anymore he may not be there with Emma anymore. He may not be able to spend time with James again. He may not be able to see Anna Maria anymore. He may not be able to work with Max Modell at Horizon University anymore. But at the very least, they're alive. They're safe. And that's all that matters to him. He's, ba he's a monster again. But he can live with that as long as they're alive. And that's what makes it sadder. You can tell... Because... Despite Otto's stalwart behavior at the end of the book, at him trying to just stay as aloof as possible, you can tell there's still a yearning. He wants that all back, but he can never have it back. He is Otto. He is Doctor Octopus again. He is a he is a he is a he is a wanted criminal and a monster, and ultimately mean, that means that he can never have it. And that's what makes it sad, which makes the final shot of the comic accentuate it with, with Otto accentuating that there's no going back, especially with him just dumping the superior Spider-Man costume into a trash can. It just, it hurts. And it hurts so much. And it, hurt, it really does hurt. And that's why it works. That's why I love this ending. It is so well done it's a great and i think in my opinion it it showcases what is essentially the epitome of otto's character development that he was willing to let himself be go, go back to being a monster go back to being a super villain again if it meant that everyone he loved was safe he was a lot he allowed himself to be dropped back to be taken by the darkness again just so that what he had in the light can live on i love that it's tragic it's sad but beautiful and it really fit and it really hits as the, as the zenith of Otto's character in the story so i love it it works and quite frankly i think i can say that for the story itself automatic is i think not just a great follow up to spider geddon but a great story but a great finale to this run of the superior spider-man it's beautiful it encapsulates otto's character development up to this point seeing him struggling with the guilt of his actions or his lack of actions seeing him desperately trying to still do good but wondering what it means to do that to face a to have him actually to have him affirm that that he is loved he is cared about and then finally see all of that be challenged and threatened by this single foe who wants nothing more than to destroy Otto for just slighting him slightly I use that twice but you get my point Ot everything that Otto cares about is threatened and to save it all Otto allows himself to be Otto goes back to being Doc Ock because he knows that he need that ultimately these people are more if these people truly are important to him, then he'd rather see them safe than with him. And I love, and it's, again, it works so well. The build-up to it is perfect. You see Otto making more, seeing you see Otto spending time with all these people, with Emma, with Anna Maria, with Max Modell, with Peter, of all, with Peter, everything. And then see, and then ultimately... And seeing uh, and throughout the story, you see Otto getting more and more desperate as Spider Norman continues hitting all the sweet, get, hit, keeps hitting all of these parts of Otto's life that hurt to to hurt him. He starts, he attacks, he, he first outs his identity both publicly and in private. He attacks the the university that Otto works, intentionally harming the pe the people in there that he cares and loves about. He attacks a child that Otto has grown close to, and then to try and rub salt on the wound, he tries to he wants and further drag Otto down by having him kill innocent people just to save this one kid. It's genuine. It like you get, like, I love like seeing Otto be pushed this far and try and getting so desperate to try and find a solution, knowing that this man has beat him in every single turn, and he quickly realizes if I beat him too, I need to sink down to his level and. The, and ultimately seeing that struggle happen, it makes it sad because like Anna Maria, you don't want Otto to go back to being a monster. You want to see him continue being a good person. You want to see him continue doing the right thing. And so when Anna Maria and Mephisto are trying to sway Otto one way or another, you're with Anna Maria. You're like, come on, Otto, make the right, come on, Otto, there's got to be another way. You don't have to do this. Come on, you can do better. But ultimately Otto's at his wit's end. And despite all, and despite what you want to happen, 
Otto makes the selfish call. He, tur he allows himself to go back to being Dr. Octopus because he genuinely believes that he was stronger as Doc Ock and that if he wants to save the, and if he wants to stop Spider-Norman, then he needs to be as strong as he can get, both physically and emotionally, meaning that he needs to get rid of, meaning he has to forget about being the superior Spider-Man. And I don't mean that literally. He doesn't actually, like I said, like we saw, saw in the comic, he didn't forget everything. I just, he just has to push it all aside, whether he wants to or not. So, again, it works. And it works so damn well. And as a result, I think I can safely say, the this run of the Superior Spider-Man, or even this storyline, is probably one of my favorite comics of all time. It's rife with emotion, rife with tragedy, with heart, with action, with sadness, with with a, a great bittersweetness that celebrates everything good, but also but also but also tears it down as well, leaving a husk. And ultimate and in that husk and with that husk and with that and with that and with that husk around, we were reminded there was good. That once upon a time, Otto made something of his life. He built something greater, but he had to leave it all behind. Not just for, not because he got bored of it, not because he thought, oh, I like being a supervillain more, but because he felt it was the only decision he could make if it meant saving everyone. And it's beautiful. It's sad, it's brilliant, but also feels like the epitome of Otto's character development. Seeing him make this tough call, decide I need to be a monster again just to save everyone that he loves, it's perfect. And it for further continues affirming to me why the superior Spider-Man is still one of my favorite incarnations of the character. And the thing is... While I was initially afraid when I read this comic that they would turn Otto back into a bad guy because at this point I did not want him to be a bad guy again. Well, he didn't exactly go he didn't exactly go back. I think in fact to my knowledge, the only other time I've seen him as a bad guy in the pages of Spider-Man after this was during the Ze the Zeb Wells run of the Amazing Spider-Man, which yeah, the less said about that run the better. But otherwise, after this, the next time we see Otto He's still kind of sort of working in the hero game. During the event comic Devil's Reign, Wilson Fisk, who was the who was the mayor of New York at the time, wound up kicking Reed Richards out of the Baxter building and handed it over to Otto Octavius. And using Reed's interdimensional technology, Otto wound up forming a new Fantastic Four, who he called the Superior Four, made up of himself and three other versions of himself from parallel universes. One where he was Wolverine, one where he was the Hulk, and one where he was the Ghost Rider. A set with the four of them actually putting in an effort to be a superhero team. Of course, they were also also they had they also did still have some megalomaniacal agendas as Otto did briefly decide maybe we could take over the multiverse by recruiting Otto Octaviuses, but he quickly kind of got he quickly got humbled when a, when a when a when a more superior version of them wanted wanted kicking their asses and he and well clearly showed he was even more megalomaniacal. And as a result, the Ottos took him down and the main universe Otto decided we just tried our hand at being at being superior heroes instead of being villains. So again, I so again, there were it showed that there was still character development. And the thing is, despite what Otto claims at the end of this book, this was not the end of the Superior Spider-Man. As I speak right now, there is a new Superior Spider-Man comic that is coming out with Otto once again reclaiming the title of the webhead and essentially his big journey to reclaim the memories that he lost from his deal with Mephisto, to reclaim, to become the man he was again, which, in my opinion, I think is a great character journey. Because yeah, as we established, him making that deal did cost him a few memories, as he had to, as par every part of Peter Parker had to be taken out of his mind. So I do like that Otto's new care, that Otto's new point in life is to try and you know go back to being that man, which means he's got to get those experiences back. I love that. I love that, and I'm glad that the Superior. Spider-Man in ever is still is still finding ways to continue coming around even to this day. But as this book stands, 
I think it is a masterpiece of, of superhero storytelling. It's got great emotion, great tension, great great charm, some great charm, great tragedy, some gr a bittersweet ending that a bittersweet ending that leaves you not want that leaves you wondering whether Otto's gonna stay, is gonna actually try and stay a good guy or go back to being a villain. And the final shot of the comic of him just leave, of him just walking in the cemetery with his costume thrown into a garbage can. It's just beautiful, poetic, and just downright amazing. I highly recommend this comic if you haven't read it yet. It's an amazing story, an amazing to, amazing take on Otto Octavius and Spider-Man, and hands down is more than worthy of being one of my favorite comics of all time. So check it out if you haven't. I cannot recommend it enough. So yeah, I think that's really all I have to say. I... Hope you enjoyed the video. Again, I apo I apologize for my voice. I'm still kind of getting over. So I'm still getting over what I had last week. But come back on Thursday, on Thanksgiving Day, nonetheless. As well, we get as well. Now we're done with the Spider Geddon era of things, and I think it's time we begin. Well, kind of the shortest of the Spider Verse eras. I'll get to explaining why when we get there. But well, needless to say. We're just, we're going to be doing a bit of universe bopping next time around because after all we as we saw in Spider Geddon the Web of Life and Destiny still needs to be restored. So what happens when it's finally brought back? Well, we'll find out next time as when we come back on Thursday we'll be entering into what I call the Spider Zero era. So till then, I hope you have a good Tuesday evening and as always take care.